Who's your worst neighbor and what makes them so fucking awful? Story 1. My husband calls me all the time to identify certain bugs or snakes he finds at work. I'm never wrong and can usually ID it immediately. Every once in a while, I may need a second on Google, like if he finds an invasive species, because I know the family it belongs to, but can't remember its specific name. He thinks it's a superpower or something. I tell him over and over again that knowing the different, potentially harmful creatures that live in your state is something most people should know. But his coworkers think it's pretty neat. They send him photos on his days off all the time asking him to ask me if a spider in their house is dangerous or not. It's also limited to my state and the surrounding areas, or unless it's a particularly dangerous species like the Sydney funnel webs, inland taipans, sea crate, or Brazilian wandering spiders, which, fun fact if bitten by, can give men raging hard-ons before possible death. Story 2. Flipping Pam? Pam was a single mom with her teenage daughter, and for the first few years we more or less got along. Helped her move some furniture in, listened to her bad person about her work, and ignored the breed that billowed off of her adjacent back deck. I don't know what caused it, but Pam started to lose her cow. Everyone was out to get her, myself included, and she loved to call the cops. Once she called the cops because the garbage man put my trash can too close to her driveway after emptying it. Usually it was for watching TV at 9 p.m. at night, because she thought any noise was a pointed attempt to keep her from sleeping. The craziest was when I was having an argument during the summer, and some windows were open. Pam called the police and told them that I had been recording an argument that she had with her daughter and was playing it back on loop to torment her. Pam was nuts. Story 3. Which one do you want? The guy who would go on candy-fueled rampages screaming for hours at a time? The one who would while staring at and recording women through his front window as they passed by? The one who stabbed a guy in his house? Or the one who had two different cars of theirs set on fire within a single week? The last one is especially fun as their next-door neighbor's handicapped accessible van caught fire too. Edit. I can't believe I forgot my favorite crazy neighbor story. When I was in high school, our across-the-street neighbor declared himself a member of the Montana militia. We don't live in Montana or anywhere close, and decided that paying taxes and car registration fees was unnecessary since he was now a sovereign nation into himself. He had quite a few Dale Gribble eccentricities. He knew that eventually the government would be coming to claim his properties, so he prepared. He removed the fence to his backyard, lined up his three cars side by side, and replaced the fence. He then welded all three cars together via a couple long bars across the bottom, then left his yard hose on for days. Weeks? When they finally came to take his cars away, they had to remove the fence, then tried dragging the first car out. That one dragged the other two along with it, which pulled them all deep into the mud. They had to get several trucks and a welder out to take care of the matter. It was pretty fantastic. Story 4? My current neighbors are loud and they breathe like chimneys. They have a medium-sized dog that lives outside. He's called Rocket and he's so bored that he barks a lot at small things. Open the back door on their side of the house? He's off. He won't stop barking for 15 minutes to an hour. That barking ruins me. They go out shopping on the weekend and he starts barking. Not a regular I'm excited barks. I can filter those out in my head. These are I have nothing better to do barks. One every second with a monotonous regularity that does my head in. They constantly leave the poor mutt outside in the cold, and he sits and whines all the way into the night until he falls asleep. Story 5. I grew up in a rough neighborhood. Rough neighborhoods are kind of funny, based on what I've heard from other people with similar experiences, in that you tend to have a really polarizing effect. You have your ghost neighbors, people that never talk to anyone, and for all intents and purposes don't exist. You have your neighbors from hell. And you have your awesome neighbors that you keep as close to you as possible, because in that kind of setting, you need to. The neighbor on either side of the house I grew up in was pretty good. On the right was a ghost neighbor who eventually started talking to us and being pretty cool. And on the left were my godparents. Across the street was a family of meth addicts. Two doors down from them on the corner was a guy who cooked and sold meth. He had a network of users and sellers all down the street and, oh no, near one corner house at every intersection was involved with him. This guy was a flipping icon. People in the area called him a number of things. Tweaker Dan was one nickname. The white guy was another. He had a makeshift auto shop in his garage, and he worked on cars from around 5 a.m. until about midnight every day, loudly, punctuated by people coming and going from his house to buy meth or shoot the cow or whatever. Sometimes he would have loud arguments with people outside, and sometimes he would have gunfights with people he argued with. More often, when he went for his gun, people left. Dan rode his bike everywhere. He had a car, and it worked, but he generally just rode his bike all over the place. Now, growing up, I just saw him as a poor neighbor, to be feared and avoided. The thing was, Tweaker Dan was actually a pretty friendly guy. 
He would wave to everyone, neighbors, anyone who lived in the neighborhood, anyone he recognized, really. It wasn't until I was older that I learned a little more about Dan and his operation because of some mutual friends I ended up knowing. Dan didn't just supply meth to the neighborhood users and sellers. Dan controlled a large amount of the local supply chain. There were two major gangs in the area, but our neighborhood fell directly in a kind of neutral area between their territories. One gang probably could have taken our neighborhood if they had wanted to. They were big enough and powerful enough. But for Dan, Dan was their supplier. They knew him as the white guy. And part of their arrangement with him is that he sold to them. But they stayed the fudge out of the neighborhood. This was his arrangement with anyone affiliated that he sold to. He would sell to pretty much anyone. But if he dealt with you, you kept your cow out of his neighborhood. Don't cow where you live sort of thing. Turns out, this is also why he rode his bike everywhere and waved to everyone. Dan was keeping an eye on who came and went. He waved because he wanted you to know he was watching. It wasn't so much that he was being friendly, though he was, but that he was communicating something very important. He was watching. To those of us that weren't involved with him, we didn't know. We didn't know about his rules, who he said was allowed to come and go. The arrangements he'd made that basically kept our neighborhood from getting worse as the city around us turned to cow. We only knew about his erratic and peculiar behavior, that he never slept, that he dealt sweets, that he did them. A lot of the clean houses in the neighborhood vilified him, but it was always peculiar to see which houses were friendly with him because it was not always who you'd expect. For a guy who had so much interaction with the meth heads, he was also friends with the prison guard, the family who lived a few doors down, my godfather. People you'd have thought would have avoided him, but they knew. Fudge knows how, but they did. I asked my godfather about it after I found out, and he said, yeah, he knew. He just didn't see it as something that should be talked about. So that's Tweaker Dan, one of the best and worst neighbors I've ever had. Story six, does my landlady's daughter count? I live in a room with private bathroom off of their home, and it's a pretty convenient setup. I'm almost never home other than to sleep, so generally the little annoyances don't bother me. But holy hell, I want to throw this girl into a bag and drown her into the river. She's 19 years old, living at home while she takes some time off from college. Okay, pretty reasonable, I've been there before. Except she acts like a five-year-old. Her speaking voice is at best a yell. At worst, it's a demon screech from hell. She likes to hang out in the room directly next to mine and scream full volume at her mother pretty much every day. They're not normal arguments either. Her mother is always very calm and reasonable, while this girl just throws tantrums like a child because she doesn't like what her mother is making for dinner, or her mother isn't paying enough attention to her. Just really the kind of stuff toddlers enjoy complaining about. Normally I just tune it out, but I work an overnight shift on the weekends and have to catch up on sleep during the day. Unfortunately for me, she has the weekends off, and it seems like they are her favorite time to scream for hours on end. This girl also fancies herself a singer and is trying to get herself into a performance art program at some college. She's applied to a bunch now, I think, and she likes to practice for her auditions again in the room right next to mine. Her voice literally sounds like a dying cat, hence the river drowning. Of course, if anyone tries to give her constructive criticism, she just shrieks, so they let her be. Now recently, I've heard a lot of sobbing from her because she's starting to get rejection letters from the colleges she's been applying to with these horrible auditions. I normally try to keep as much distance from her as possible, but her sister and I are friends, so when her sister is visiting from out of town, this girl will invite herself along on our plans. And since we don't want to listen to her scream, we just let it happen. On one of these outings, I learned that she's also a dancer. I figured we had finally found some common ground. So I ask her what styles she's into and she says ballet, modern, and tango. I don't know much about the first two, but I'm a competitive international ballroom dancer, so I tried asking her what style tango she dances, assuming she probably also dances the other dances in the style, and just mentioned the dance she's working on. She just met me with a blank stare and repeated as if I were the five-year-old that she's dancing tango, didn't I hear her? So I elaborate, asking if she means international or American, and she starts to get pissed off saying that she just dances regular tango. Apparently, she just walked into an Arthur Murray dance studio and told them she wanted to dance tango. And because it's Arthur Murray, they charged her an absurd amount of money for their studio gear and just started teaching her some unidentifiable form of tango. At that point, I was just like, oh, okay, cool. But I'd already set off her rage, so she starts shrieking, asking what I even know about tango. I reminded her that I'm a ballroom dancer, and her response was, I don't dance ballroom, I dance tango. Aren't you flipping listening? We just don't really speak anymore. And yet the headache just from listening to her in the next room never seems to go away. Story 7. The ones directly below me. Now, granted they are in their early 70s, but here's the situation. They are sandwiched between our flat and the flat below them. They stay in all day, every day, every week, 
only going out at the crack of dawn for a walk or once twice a week for the weekly shop. They live underneath two people, me and housemate, yet expect total and utter silence at all times. They complain when we walk around, and after the first time we made a pointed effort to be more light-footed, remove shoes, etc. We have carpets, but they still complain that we walk around too much. They complain they can hear us go to the toilet. Well, sorry. I will just have my bladder explode so as not to inconvenience you. One time I was lying in bed, no music, nothing, just on Reddit. I get up to pee and leave my room and go into the bathroom opposite. As soon as I shut the door, I hear the front door open. Thinking it's my housemate, I shout out, yo, but I hear a strange voice in return. I stepped out the bathroom and there's my downstairs neighbor. He let himself in. And he's talking about, I don't understand it, am I dreaming? Because all I can hear is banging and crashing all day. Mother, bad person. I've been in bed for the last two hours around on Reddit. Absolutely insane. I had to drive him out amid his protests of, but your door was unlocked. It's not an invitation to come in. Story 8. They have a house with knocked up add-ons and junk all in their yard, which I wouldn't care about except it's pretty unsafe for their four dogs that stay chained up in the middle of everything. Unfortunately, we live in the country, so it's them or a terminate shelter. We hardly see the same car twice, and they're always outside fighting partying. We've talked to them once because one of their motorcycles got stolen. The guy's exact words were, Keep an eye out, and if you see anything, tell me not the cops. This ain't really a cop thing. Their poor guests throw trash in our yard, and one came into my yard and chased my cat for fun. I had to act nonchalant about it, though, because who flipping knows what that dude was on? BTW, we actually live across the street from them, so the fact that they cross just to dump cow here is infuriating. Did I mention we're both homeowners? So no one's moving for a while. Story 9. My old neighbor was a grumpy old alcoholic. He used to complain when we had our light on too late at night. The light on in our bedroom. He also used to be quite horrible to my girlfriend. Once called her a bad person. Whenever I tried to talk to him, he wouldn't open the door to me or would run away because I shouted at him once. Here is the karma, though. He used to knock on the door to moan at my girlfriend when I was at work. So naturally, my girlfriend started ignoring him when he did this. One day, she hears frantic banging, ignores him. Turns out he was having a stroke and couldn't speak, so couldn't call an ambulance. He now lives in a nursing home. We aren't horrible people at all. If we had known what was happening, we would have opened the door and called an ambulance. It just goes to show. Be nice to everyone. You might need their help one day. Story 10. When I was in elementary school, I lived next to this kid named Kevin in the same grade as me. Kevin was genuinely the most annoying kid I've ever known. He constantly whined whenever he was around, and he stole more of my stuff than I'm probably aware of. In multiple instances, he'd spend the night, and I'd go to his house soon after and find something of mine like a game or a toy. Once, I caught him taking a litter of kittens our cat had birthed and grabbing them under their front legs only to flip them backwards onto a bed like some sort of toy with a stupid, cow-eating grin on his face. I've had rude neighbors since, but he will go down in history as the worst kid I've ever had the misfortune of living next to. Story 11. My neighbors across the street. They're total douchebags. They've lived across from me all 20 years of my life, and they're still the biggest I know. Let's meet the family. We'll call them Dell, Sally, and Ted. Dell is 65-ish, mean and overall just a terrible human. Sally is 60-ish. She's an uppity bad person who thinks she's better than everyone. Ted is their 40-ish son who still lives at home. Their lawn Nazis always has to be worked on. 5 a.m. on a Saturday? Yep. 11 p.m. on Sunday? Yep. But God heaven forbid I want to play basketball in my driveway. It's the end of the flipping world. Dell and Sally both have work cars. Dell, Sally, and Ted all have their own personal cars as well. That's five cars for three people in a double wide, no garage driveway. So one car has to be in the street. I commute to school. Both of my parents have a car. I have a car. I park in the street because my schedule varies from my parents. We have a fire hydrant on one side of the yard. So it would be illegal if I parked in the street anywhere beside about 15 feet from the edge of their drive on my side of the street. They bad person about it. Is that your car? It's way too close to our driveway. If we hit it, we'll sue. They call the cops for every argument that happens. Lighting off fireworks on 4th of July? You betcha. Me having friends over on a Friday? Cops. I get home at 2 a.m.? Cops! Dog in the back for more than 10 mins! Cops! Only time they didn't call the cops. When my house was robbed when I was 12 and they refused to talk to them about it. They're the worst neighbors I could imagine. I've never disliked a person more than I dislike them. Edit. Holy cow, I definitely didn't think this would blow up. To answer some of the questions. 1. Yes. Where I live, it's totally legal to shoot off fireworks inside city limits as long as they're not professional grade 2. They don't call about the dog barking. They call because it's animal cruelty. If my dog could choose, he would be outside in the dirt 20 hours a day. 
so I don't see why a half hour pisses them off three. My friends and I are never loud or cause disturbances. They hate that there's an extra five cars on our street four. Their son doesn't have any disabilities that I know of, from what the neighbor on their right told us. He just likes living at home five. I suppose I'm not 100% sure on if they call the cops anymore. The cops have showed up maybe three times max. They showed up for the parking thing once. They showed up because of the dog once and once because I had friends over. Whenever there's a discussion between us, they always threaten to call the cops and I say go ahead because I know I'm not doing anything wrong and it's just going to waste everyone's time. They usually call from their front lawn, but can't be sure they're actually calling them or using it as a scare tactic six. I'm not the only neighbor who dislikes them. They just happen to dislike my family the most. I guess edit two. Sorry, I forgot to include the neighborhood as it will probably clear up some of the questions as well. I live in a decent neighborhood, but not one nice enough to have a HOA or block committee. There's not really anyone we can complain to. I also meant they have a double wide driveway, not that they live in a double wide trailer. Story 12. Oh, oh no, this is a nice one. I live in a pretty nice apartment with one big downside. I share a toilet with other person on the same floor as me. To get to it, you have to leave the apartment and enter the attic. On the same floor as my apartment, with the storage units for the rest of the building, etc. My neighbor is a senile, demented drunk, with whom I share a toilet. Why he isn't in a home is beyond me. His caretakers who visit him once each day have hinted that he might eventually get put into one. But there's no indication that it will actually happen. He can't take care of himself. He's always drunk. The girl who lives on the floor below have had to call 911 several times when he couldn't get up the stairs. He's constantly extremely noisy. Image the sound of moving furniture every night. I have no idea what he's doing, but I'm happy that I don't live below him. But the worst part by far is the toilet situation. Let's start of easy. He never flushes. Almost every time I have to use the toilet, I have to flush down old cow first. He seldom closes the door. Remember that the toilet is on the attic with the storage units. Almost everyone in the building had walked in and seen him sitting on a doe at some point. Me more than most. And as a grand finale, he litters the floor. I have no idea how he does it. But occasionally I will walk in and there's cow everywhere. On the toilet ring. On the floor underneath the toilet ring. The walls everywhere. It's like he slipped of the toilet mid-cow and just didn't stop pooping. Just let it all out wherever it lands. One rather spectacular time he seems to have lost all control of his sphincter on his way to from the toilet and let it rain in the corridor outside our apartments. Literally let it rain too. It was a couple of puddles of pure liquid. Imagine if someone spilled a cup of coffee on the floor pretty much right outside my door. It smelled something unholy. Not like regular defecation, just this oppressive odor that made it hard to breathe. Almost threw up right there. So yeah, I wouldn't be sad to see him go. Edit. All right, so this got a bit bigger than expected. Let me clarify a few things. The apartment might not be the most amazing thing ever, but currently I cannot afford a much higher rent. And the location is amazing. Honestly, the landlord could double the rent and get away with it, just due to location alone. Personally, a shared toilet and bathroom for those who asked, isn't a huge problem if I shared it with someone who handled it well. Currently, I don't, but if a reasonably clean person lived there, I would be 100% okay with not having my own. There's not cow on the floor every day. It used to be at most maybe once a month. Since the last incident, maybe three months ago, however, we managed to get him caretakers, and since then, there's been no problem. He seems to have sobered up, and nothing gross have happened. I hope it stays that way. Story 13. My old neighbors was drunks and held nightly gatherings for other drunks. They kept pissing on my fence and into my yard. Every time I told them to stop, 10 drunks showed up in my yard threatening with fire and murder. And I'm pretty sure one of them had my cat in its tail while swinging it over his head. The damages and the doctor said so when I had to pay $2,000 to get the spine reattached and the tail cut off. Anyways, I began filming everything in plain sight and told them I was filming. Eventually, they broke under pressure and went ballistic. $10 damage in under 5 minutes. They got a huge bill, and I had enough evidence to get one of them fired, and two of their kids removed. So I did. I'm not even sorry. All they did with those kids was screaming they should pour out the water off outside. I moved shortly after and now have nice new Korean neighbors to one side, and a sea captain that's never home to the other side. Sry for spelling. It's a bit late early where I am. Story 14. My neighbor. Let me tell you about this guy. In the apartment to my left is a guy who is studying music at university. He plays guitar and he's really amazing. Above me, a 14-year-old kid who plays the most beautiful piano every afternoon at 4 p.m. Then there's this guy. Knows one Nirvana riff which he plays over and over again from 3 a.m. till 5 a.m. on a piece of cow electric guitar at full volume. 
He never gets it right and never gets better at it. He's a candy dealer, but not a scary Breaking Bad type one. He's a 35-year-old scooter-riding unemployed loser whose frail elderly parents come over every week to do his washing and clean the flat they had to buy for him to live in. This month to make ends meet, he has sublet his windowless one-car garage to a meth-addicted prostitute who services a seemingly endless line of overweight middle-aged cabbies, loudly, and is frequently beaten up by her pimp boyfriend. Some days she leaves the garage door open so we can see the airless, dank squalor she's been driven to live in. Old couch for sleeping close relationship. Dirty clothes as a makeshift carpet. I had a baby this month. Then the lady at the front apartment had one too. I put the crib against the wall we both share. Now this shower bag is sandwiched between two screaming newborns who never sleep. Ever. And it feels so good. Edit. To clarify, when I say he's a candy dealer, I mean he sells candy to other unemployed hipsters. Also, I am doing what I can to help the lady in the garage by talking with police. If she wants to take sweets or sell close relationship, that's her business. But no one deserves to be beaten. Story 15? There's a particular type of person who seems to feel like they're the only thing standing between society and complete collapse. And about six years ago, my downstairs neighbor was one of them. She was aloof and paranoid, and she'd imagined threats from almost everywhere, which made the fact that she thought of herself as some kind of secret agent all the more annoying. Said neighbor was always trying to find ways of getting me, and anyone else whom she thought of as suspicious, to move out of the building. She'd stage loud telephone calls with headquarters about the alarming behavior of the other tenants, like my tendency to get home after nine in the evening, which was clearly scandalous, and frequently yell at the people who'd stand on the corner to breathe. On one occasion, I heard her shouting at someone over the placement of a flower pot in their window, which was obviously an indication that they were selling sweets. It was perhaps the most ridiculous attempt at an official document that I'd ever seen, and I'm including the time that my friend Jonathan, then nine years old, made a flyer for bodyguard services. The atrocious grammar, poorly photoshopped seal, and distinct absence of any legitimate contact information made the notice about as realistic as a scene from NCIS. Furthermore, the reference to the past two years seemed to indicate me as her primary target, since I was, as far as I knew, the only resident who had been there for less time than that. Still, since the notice was clearly meant to scare someone, I decided to return the favor by taking a page out of my neighbor's own playbook and standing outside of her apartment while staging my own fake phone call. You should see the notice. It's terrible. Ha, huh, yeah, it's like they didn't know that impersonating a federal official is a felony. Anyway, the real FBI are on their way, and they're going to dust for fingerprints. Whoever made that notice is looking at a lot of jail time. I went back inside my apartment after that, and within seconds, I heard my neighbor's door open. There was the sound of hurried footsteps rushing towards the stairwell, followed by an equally hurried retreat. When I went out to check five minutes later, the notice was gone. I've since moved away from that location. But for the rest of the time that I lived there, the lady never bothered me again. TLDR. My idiotic neighbor liked to pretend that she was a secret agent. Story 16. We just moved to a new neighborhood. Haven't really met anyone other than the two houses on either side of us. On our right is a great single dad with two high school-aged kids and a sweet freaking baseball diamond in his backyard. You can see it on Google Satellite. It is legit. And to the right is the woman who calls the cops on them. Kids playing a game. Cops. Kids outside doing nothing wrong, not even drinking on a Friday night. Cops. Car in front of her house. Cops. We have lived there four months now and her house has been egged twice. She asked if ours has. Talking to one of the kids, she had sliced a tire of a friend's car, so they retaliated. This is going to be an interesting life. We are trying to stay on her good side. Thankfully, we are quite so she probably won't hate us. Story 17. I'd always had problems with my neighbor until we put up a fence about two years ago. He is a self-employed plumber and a nasty hoarder. When I moved in, he was dumping his lawn clippings behind my shed. He had a junk pile on the property line. PVC pipes, traffic signs, political ad yard signs, plastic barrels. And I would have to go out back every few days to clear my yard of his cow. For years, he was claiming about an extra five feet of my yard without my knowledge. When the land surveyors came out to set the property line for the fence guys, I was not surprised to see that I suddenly had an extra five feet of yard. I promptly mowed all of the ugly plants and flowers that were planted in my yard. It felt great. Put up the fence, and I haven't had a problem with him since. His wife divorced him soon after. Their daughter, whom we adored, told us that her mom was glad to finally have a garage where she can actually park a car inside because it's not filled wall to wall, floor to ceiling with junk hoard. We had a good laugh. Kids say the darndest things. Story 18. Romanians living in the upstairs apartment. Flipping living hell. Apartments are sized for three people, but they've got like eight. Ten people in there illegally. Constant entering and leaving as late as 3, 4 a.m. 
They've been visited by so many housing officials, but they keep denying them entry. Then, one day, the police raid the place at flipping 6.30 a.m., ramming down the door with a flipping battering ram. One guy ran off and literally just flipping, tumbled down the stairs and bolted down the street. Apart from that fire hazard, water leaks, one of which went into my main electricity line. It was pretty funny trying to explain to them that they couldn't use the shower and that they'd flipping pass away if there was a short with a direct connection to them through the water. Damage to my door from them, moving beds out, smell, late noise. They have a deadline till April 8th when the municipality is going to inspect the place. If it doesn't immaculately conform to standards, they get kicked the fudge out. Thank God. Edit. Literally only just noticed how many times I've written fudge in this post. I really flipping hate those flipping people. Story 19. I lived in an apartment that was on the very low income side of my town. My neighbors were meth heads with kids. All day kids would scream and mom would be in the bathroom smoking. The smell just permeated everything. They constantly fought. One late December morning, Mr. Meth got mad at Mrs. Meth because he thought she was cheating. His logical response? Set her car on fire. Luckily it was in the street so there was no damage. Well, about a week later they get in another argument and guess what? She retaliates. She sets his car on fire. His is in the carport. It burnt our complex to the ground. Since this was in the ghetto and snitches get stitches, no one would talk to the police so no justice was ever served. But hey, at least it got me out of my lease. Story 20. My neighbors are all perfectly silent. I'm fairly certain I'm the obnoxious neighbor. Edit. To clarify, I live in an apartment. Sometimes I'll break out into song without realizing that it's almost midnight. Or do dishes late at night because I usually have late suppers and never do the dishes otherwise. Also, every time I have close relationship with my girlfriend, our bed slams against the wall the whole time, and we're generally pretty loud anyways. I also have showers late at night, which I'm certain is loud for the old Chinese guy next door, and we often do laundry late at night too, which means we're eye-opening and closing the apartment door and going up and down the stairs. We also don't have any curtains and have the apartment closest to the parking lot, meaning I'm fairly certain a handful of our neighbors have seen my Johnson. After typing this all out, I realize why our neighbors never speak to us. Story 21. Small town in the northern edge of Alberta, very close to the Arctic territories. You wouldn't think there'd be sweets or anything, right? Wrong. Some guy moved next door when I was about 10 years old. Decent guy with a family, moved to town because he's a long-haul trucker. Well, my dad helps him get a new job so he can be close to his family all the time. But Fudge Head decides instead to try and get my dad fired so he can move up the ranks. Doesn't work out. Buddy gets fired, and now we have a neighbor that we don't like. Still tolerable, but then Cow really goes downhill. Guy's family leaves him because he's becoming a deadbeat, and the he goes off the rails. Throwing parties all the time, gets a new weirdo of a GF. Then eventually the sweets start. This mother bad person went from a decent life with a good family to a crackhead mental case. The cops keep breaking down his door. The damn creeps keep coming in and out. This is a quiet neighborhood in northern Canada. There shouldn't be Compton Cow going on next door. Eventually, Greaseball sells his house and moves away to start something else. But fudge me was that a weird 10 years living next to him. New neighbors are a super chill young couple from down south. They're cool. Story 22. I moved not too long ago, but my old neighbors were the worst. The place across the street was a duplex and had a revolving door of awful people. The first year I lived at that place wasn't too bad. It was a reclusive guy on one side and a woman with three kids on the other. The only problem was this woman wouldn't watch her kids at all. They would be playing in the road all the time. In the summer, they were up to midnight every single night. The worst part was none of these kids could be over 10. One of them always bounced on a pogo stick. I'd just hear that annoying sound until midnight. It's like that flipping kid did nothing else but bounce on that pogo stick. Every night I'd fall asleep to a sound I can only equate to two fat people having close relationship on a bed of springs. The reclusive old man moved out, and cow got real bad. Every few months, people would move in and prove themselves to be worse than the last tenants. First group of people would sit on their porch all day yelling at people who walked past them. All day, every day. Hey girl, where is your fine peach going? Where the fudge are you going? Stop and talk to me! You stupid bad person. That was an interesting few months. Then they got replaced by these people who were just loud. They didn't seem too bad until one night when the girls of the house got into a drunken fight at 2 a.m. They started beating the cow out of each other in the street. One girl drunkenly fled to her car and sideswiped three cars on the street before crashing. The last lot was the worst. They were obviously candy dealers and had swarms of people in and out of the place and blocking traffic. This was annoying, but still tolerable. Then they started throwing insanely loud parties every night. The main kicker was the one dude who lived there wouldn't drive anywhere without a beer. I've never actually seen someone drink and drive. The dude would just stumble to his car at 11 a.m. with a beer in his hand almost every day. 
I never saw this guy get into his car without a beer. Occasionally, he would just chug it and then throw it on the ground as he got in. The other problem with these neighbors was broken glass. They would throw their empty liquor bottles into the street constantly. I never bothered to get cops involved until these neighbors had moved in. Apparently, everyone on my street had complained about them, but they were still there when I moved out. 2,600 miles later, and I have much better neighbors. Story 23, old, miserable, lonely, unpleasant with a disobedient dog. Always complained about noise well before the curfew. Let himself into our apartment on one occasion to drop a letter or something off when we left the door unlocked. I bumped lightly into his car whilst backing out of the parking lot once, leaving a half-inch chip in his bumper and stupidly went and told him about it straight away and he lost his mind on me. I was a student at the time and broke, driving my roommate's car so insurance was off the table. I had a friend mechanic assess it, and he said he'd do it for $250, to which Bob said, I'm not having some chop shop touch my car. I want to pick my own place. So he made a big deal about not having his car while it was in the shop. He's retired and hardly ever left the flipping house. And the diagnostic comes out to be around $950 two months rent. I explain that I can't pay it all up front and have to break it up into four payments, to which he replies, I need to have it fixed right away. If that thing cracks, then my whole bumper is ruined, blah, blah, blah. I tell him I can't just pull money out of thin air and give him four post-dated checks. Six, eight months go by after the last check clears, and guess what? Bumper still has a chip in it. No wonder he's alone at this age. Edit. I drove the car because my roommate was intoxicated and wanted me to pick him up. The insurance covered me as a secondary driver, but I decided to pay myself as not to raise my roommates. Technically, his grandmother's money rates. Story 24. Okay, I live in the middle of East Bumble, so there are quite a few that I can share. Earl. We have this crotchety old man named Earl who lives a few houses away from us. He keeps security cameras in his front yard pointed at the street and dashes out to scream at children for trespassing on private property when they set one foot on the drainage ditch across the street from his house. He threatened to shoot our dog once, and he's just a flipping weirdo in general. There's the chanter. A little bit of backstory. I live in the backwater town of Yelm, Washington, and we have a local religious nut job called Jay-Z. Knight, who is the inventor of this crazy cult, which is really popular here. The lady who lives at the end of the street subscribes to this religion and constantly knocks every house's door in the neighborhood trying to get us to convert. It was especially bad for me because I was friends with her daughter when I was younger, and she absolutely will not leave us alone. No matter how much we tell her we're not interested in her cult, she chants weird mantras when she walks down the street between each house. Finally, we've got the Rabbit Master. Holy cow. This guy used to be the landowner of our housing division, and he set all the rules for what we could keep on our property. We started noticing domesticated rabbits appearing all over the neighborhood a few months after we moved in. Apparently, this guy had a rabbit breeding mill in his backyard where he was breeding hundreds of rabbits to sell for pelts and meat. And eventually, this guy got charged with aggravated assault and decided to flee the country and run off to Mexico. He illegally released all his rabbits before he did, and we saw the last rabbit about a year ago. We've lived in this house for over 11 years, so those are my stories. Story 25. My neighbors are Polish, and they have three dogs. Chihuahuas, yippy little bastards. I'm trying to sleep since I wake up at 4 a.m., and all I can hear is, Story 26. I lived in a complex that was a rectangle with a central courtyard and all the unit's doors facing inward. It was a very social place, a block away from the beach, and all the neighbors were friends, except for one couple. We would congregate in the courtyard almost every day to barbecue, picnic, and just kick it and drink a beer at the end of the day. It rarely ever turned into a full-blown party, but occasionally we would have courtyard parties for the complex and invite friends over. This one older couple didn't get the memo that they were moving into this kind of complex and they were on a mission to stop any socializing outdoors. They would call the owner anytime people were talking outside. They would yell through their screen door at people to keep it down, even in broad daylight. If anyone was gathering outside after dark, they would call the police. I lived next door to them, and anytime I would watch TV at night or have friends over, have close relationship, or even talk on the phone at night, the guy would bang on the wall like a maniac. The woman eventually convinced the landlord to remove the patio furniture and eventually the BBQ, which actually belonged to me. 
The landlord said I could have it back but had to remove it from the premises. They got the landlord on their side. It absolutely terminated the good vibe we had going. Then one day, a young family with their new baby had a picnic in the courtyard, sitting on a blanket because the patio furniture was gone. The nasty neighbors actually came outside and started photographing them, causing them to take their baby and flee indoors. This was the last straw. We wrote up a petition to send to the landlord with an ultimatum. Shut them down and return the patio furniture and BBQ, or we will all move out. I got signatures from every single tenant in the complex. The nasty neighbors moved out the next month. On their moving day, we all threw a going-away party in the courtyard, without them, of course. When they were finished moving and they locked the door for the last time, we all sang, na 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 hey 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 goodbye story 27 richard he put cameras pointed down my friend's flipping window and this unpleasant person never stops bragging thanks for telling me about your flipping solar panels and new two trucks no i don't give a cow you're building a new wall i think the worst part is his how crazy he is with security the cameras pointed into my friend's window is bad enough but there are other moments he had binoculars and had a nasty habit of scoping out the neighbors. Additionally, my friend's son kicked a ball over his house and walked out of his front door just to scold him about how it triggered his alarm. All in all, creepy little pretentious cow. Story 28. I have a family that lives next to me. No idea how many people are actually living at the house, but I've met four of the children and the father briefly. As far as I know, they also have a mother there who recently had a baby, and I've seen more than one toddler hanging about, and I believe their grandma lives there too. Recently, they've had a few extra house guests as we have seen the conservatory made up with extra beds. They are absolute slobs. Our houses are situated at the top of what used to be an old quarry, but now has several hardware shops. They bag up their rubbish, and instead of putting it in the bins at the front of the house, climb up the fence and throw it over. I have pictures, and it looks like years and years worth thrown over. Once they tried to chuck an old duvet down there, and it got stuck in the tree. I've seen old clothing thrown over, and I'm fairly sure food waste is going over there too since a cat we had briefly kept bringing in rats. They have at least four of those large, upright wheelie bins, three of which are down the gap between our houses and haven't moved in the two years I have lived there, but are completely full. At any one time, there will be people hanging out in front of the house, grown men usually smoking candy. The children I've actually met are filthy, lazy, and nosy. My husband and I can't even hang out in our garden without eyes peeking through the fence. They are just annoying as fudge. Can't even take in a parcel delivery without seeing their noses pressed against the window. The privacy is such an issue that when we replaced our garden fences after a recent storm blew them down, we replaced them with even higher ones than before. And I've noticed their neighbors on the other side did the same. Story 29. I have lots of awful neighbors and different stories to tell about each of them. But the worst one stole a five-foot-wide strip of my family's land. Tried to claim an easement across our land to get water access and are encroaching on our land with the staircase on the side entrance to their new house. They're also horrible people in general and may have stolen our mushroom anchor. Our property line had been demarcated by an old post in the marsh, their property line by the end of the road. When their road was paved, it was extended farther onto their land than it had been when the road was just made of dirt. And we think they had some friends steal our post out of the marsh, as one day we woke up to find it missing. They then recorded a deed to their property that claimed their boundary was five feet farther over than it was. My grandfather's health was beginning to decline. They hadn't been bad neighbors up until that point, and we still had an overabundance of land. So my grandparents decided to settle with them and have that be the end of it. Big mistake, it turns out. They take this as a sign of weakness and then try to file an easement on our property that would allow them to drive over our land and use the end of our road to launch boats from. This time we don't roll over and successfully denied them the easement in court. Now they've taken advantage of the stolen land to build a big ugly house way too close to ours. And if they put in the steps leading up to their side entrance, they will officially be encroaching on our property. The joke's on them on that count though. I don't think they realize we can demand rent from them for the life of the house if they put those oh no stairs in. They're also just very spiteful people. They glare at us every time they see us and I swear, I saw our old mushroom anchor in their yard when I was doing yard work a couple of weeks ago. We're hoping they sell and some nicer people move in. Edit. Quick grammar fix.